Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about lessons that change us. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a programmer, what lesson changed how you see software engineering? Well, there are many lessons and experiences that I've had that changed my perspective. Uh, so I'm just going to pick one that I have at the top of my head and that would be when I was working at my last job where I was working in a fairly big uh, corporation and I realized that the code is always a reflection of the business and that is something that I didn't understand and I really am happy like in a way I suppose that I got this lesson because since I have been able to make better and smart, I, I, at least I feel that way, I've been able to make smarter decisions about the code that I write. And basically what happened was that when I first started I had, as many very enthusiastic programmers do, the idea that, well, we're going to do all the things that Google is doing. We're going to do all the things that the tech talkers are saying that we should be doing, and we're going to use microservices, and we're like the we're going to just basically copy paste all of the things that happen in the top brass IT companies, and we're going to make that happen. And I couldn't, for the life of me, understand why none of my coworkers saw saw that. I I had basically just a, a ton of ton of seniors around me I was probably the most one of if not the most junior person on the team and it frustrated me because I couldn't understand why we didn't do these sorts of things and after a while working I started to see a pattern and the pattern was very e it was it, it took a while for me to understand to see it but I started to realize that whenever we wanted to make something happen, we wanted to suggest a new way of working or a better way of doing things or something like that, the managers or the POs and so forth would just ask the same question every single time. Well, yeah, okay, that sounds great, but how much extra time is that going to take away from the thing that we're building right now? And you started to understand that there was no way you could make a drastic change. You could not make a drastic change of any kind in the company because there was never any... Like, because if you gave an estimate that was even slightly above what was comfortable for the business, for the business, they would say no. No, I'm sorry, we, we'll, we'll put the pin... Like, or rather they will say no, they will kill the idea through backlog which is also a very effective way of killing in the thing. Uh, if you just say that, no, maybe we can do that in the future, and then you create a, a token backlog story card for making this improvement or having a discussion, and then you put a pin in that thing, and then it's drowned out in the backlog. And you know that you kill the, you kill the problem that way. Uh, that would always happen. And the only, like, we, we could make these tiny, tiny little adjustments, like in the internal team, but then we had external teams as well, where we, ha we wanted to, say, work in an agile fashion, but we couldn't because the scheduling of other teams was also affecting our work. We, were, we had dependencies to each other. And so when we wanted to improve our part of the system, we couldn't because the pieces that were working the way that they were working towards the other teams, well, they weren't us. They were doing the, way, the work the way they wanted to do the work. So we couldn't make the world like we couldn't make our part of the system perfect, or as we want have it as the way we wanted, simply because we had other teams that depended on the way that the work was being done right there and right now. And uh, if you're paying attention, that also means that if you want to change that aspect, you need to go to the stakeholders, and they're going to say no because changing the way the way two teams work to each, with each other and changing the system is going to be very costly, and. So I started realizing that this naive, and I really believe, I really do see, see it now, I see it at the very least like I see it, this naive idea I had that whichever company I go into, or like whatever, like as, my, as the, the role of the software developer is for me to make this company 
give this company technical excellency. And I no longer believe that. I believe that it is my role to find the best technical solution given the restrictions that the company imposes. In other words, what I'm saying is very similar to that you can be the greatest contractor or like a carpenter in the world. And if your customer comes to you and says, you know what, I want a house that they have sketched themselves. Uh, you, you are looking and you look at that sketch and you see, well, this house is really weird. Well, you have to decide now. Are you go like you can give some suggestions and you can say that well you should probably want to do this and do that but at the end of the day if you want the customer to be happy it is not you for you technically it's not for you to tell them their business if you say you give them your advice and they say no actually yeah I hear what you're saying but no 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 I'm dead I'm hell bent on this thing this is way it way it way it, the way it has to work then you have to yeah I mean in, you can of course deny the contract but then you have to build it the way that they want it to even though, though there's you know that this is not going to work out you can of course walk away from the whole thing and just sa save you that energy but if you're in a company and you're like committed to the company or you want to work in it th that is literally all you can do you you realize very quickly that you cannot recreate google in your little startup or like your specific company you have to create the a version of your company that is as well functioning as that company because the problems of a company such as Facebook or whatever like whatever they're doing you don't have the same problems you will never have the same problems in some things you are li you are like other companies where you the choices in certain tools or certain technology and so forth but the way that you do work and the way that your system has to work in order to f accommodate the business need it's always it's always going to deter, it's going to be different from every company for for every company it's going to completely come down to how is this company making money how are we dealing with our customers what what are our deals and contracts and requirements and uh, compliances and stuff like that all of these different rules that you gather up as part of your problem domain these are all unique almost always to your specific company and the quicker you get on board with that, the quicker you realize that y if you go, I I that it, y your job is not to create the perfect version, the perfect system. Your job is to understand how to model a system that will be as well working as is possible for that specific company. The happier you will be, and sometimes really broad statements like, say, for example, Google's uh, automate all the things. Well, yes, this is a very good thing, but maybe in your company it's actually not possible to automate all the things. Maybe trying to, uh, maybe you will have to face the fact that some processes are going to have to be manual, and there's really no way for you to change that. Not because it's not technologically possible, but because the way that your company works simply does not accommodate that sort of structure. So, what I want you to take away from this is that the biggest lessons that I ever learned was that no matter how idealistic you are, no matter how big your ideas are and how many better ways there are of doing something, all that needs to happen for you to, to, to basically just fail all of these in, uh, in all of these ambitions is for someone to say, no, that's not how we do work at this company, or no, this is not gonna fit us and so forth. And I found that trying to resist that is usually not the it's not always the best thing sometimes yes you do have to fight for things and you actually have to push for things because they, they you, and you can and you should but don't don't let your idealistic developer heart get in the way of doing business or in doing making things work because just because there is just because a company like google does something in a certain way. That doesn't mean that that is going to be the right solution for your specific company. You need to look at your situation and find the solutions that will suit your situation the best. As I said, if you're going to build a house for somebody and they give you a blueprint of this is how I want it to work, remember, you can only give them advice on how to do things, but at the end of the day, they are the ones who are going to live in that fucking thing. And if they are not willing to 
to listen to you, you have to either walk away from the situation or you have to build it the way they want. And then you just have to make it work as well as possible given these given these restrictions. And this is why I, th this is how I went. My mindset went from thinking that a software developer's job is to make a system perfect. That is what I. This that is for me the naive way of looking at it. I think that the re, uh, the perspective that is more realistic is that the software developer's job is to try to model the business requirements as well as possible in a system, like in a technical system. That is your job. Try, try to take the problems, and sometimes those problems are very, very complicated, and sometimes they're not so complicated. But that is, in essence, what you're doing. You're just trying to take those problems and create a digital solution that reflects good, uh, good craftsmanship. That's it. You can't really do more than that, and you shouldn't do more than that, because you might actually find yourself in a situation where your idealism creates a really shitty representation of the business requirements instead. And this happens all the time, guys. Philosoph philosoph philosophical developers who actually fuck up the system because they're trying to build the wrong thing. They're not listening to the business requirement. They're not paying attention to that. They're listening to some other company like Google or Facebook, how they do things, and trying to force the company they are working in to do the same thing, even though that's actually not the right thing to do. Have a great day.